Um, I'd like to introduce Emilio and thank, give him a big hand. Please, thank you. Thanks, man. Okay, we got a lot to go through tonight, and there's people all over the spectrum here. Um, people who know nothing about construction, people who have been in construction their whole lives. And the good news is, is I preempted that. So no matter who you are, there is something coming up here for you. The roadmap for today, I'm going to tell you a bit about myself. And if you are new to construction or you're in construction, you're going to see key principles of construction as I see them in my nearly two decades in the industry. Uh, construction's a big industry. No one's an expert in it. And if they claim to be, you should look the other way. But this is, in my experience, uh, some key rules. We set that up and we say, well, in that paradigm, how has digital tech manifested itself? How has digital only tech manifested itself? Uh, how has contact happened in the world? And then finally, we'll get to the, the game changer, physical solutions for physical problems. Physical solutions for physical problems being something we're going to talk about a lot tonight, something I'm quite passionate about. And then we're going to get into the discussion. A bit about me, I just said I'm a product manager now, but I've worked in all parts of the value chain that we're going to talk about. I've been a engineering consultant, I've been a digital consultant, I've recently become a client, uh, I did an extension on my house, so now I can tick that box as I've been the financier, the customer, the everything, and I've worked on site. So there's very few parts of the value chain I've not been involved in, in construction, and most of it uh, has been on big mega projects, really complicated things. Uh, this is my first project out of school. Um, you can see me here in China, the ravages of time on full display. Like this was uh, a lot of my career was in this industry, using technology to make things that otherwise probably couldn't be made. Um, so that's just a bit about me. I'm a product manager now, but through and through, um, I understand the personas of construction. And that's a lot of my job right now is trying to understand how to make products land softly in an otherwise very challenging industry. And that's why contact matters to me is because at the end of the day, it I kind of sunk cost fallacy at this point, but also it is a big challenge um, and it's something that affects us all. And I'm fairly confident uh, there's good long-term value prospects of those of us who stick it out and keep going with it. Um, so I promised you, no matter who you were in here, we're going to talk about what construction is. And if you know nothing about construction, the great news is, is you're going to walk out with a very easy to remember set of principles that will explain every time you go past any project at all. The roads locked, oh, I know about construction. Extension project, I know about construction. It's everything, two decades of my life dedicated to this, to this principles. <laughs> What's that? What's that? I didn't say I was an artist, all right? So that's it right there, guys. We're gonna go through it real quick and we're gonna get down to construction technology, but that is it. I mean, if you have a better methodology of explaining the entire ecosystem of construction, call me. I'd love to have uh, that conversation. Shall we go through it? Um, first things first, let's get this out of the way. It happened in one real estate, built environment, infrastructure, all interchangeable words you might hear when it comes to the end product of construction. This is the thing, the big, what is the right word to say is the big asset. Right? It's a big asset that comes out the back. It's a bridge, it's a road, it's a building, it's a house extension in London, whatever you want to call it. If you're talking about technology here, what's it called? Prop tech, property tech. That's not what this meetup group's about. But just so you know, that's what we're all here to do is make that. What we're here to do is make it. And construction, sometimes referred to as AEC industry, architecture, engineering, construction. You've heard there's some architects and engineers here tonight. Can't believe it. Um, this is the industry as a whole that I would say is responsible for taking in money and spitting out the other side, physical, big physical assets. Okay. We use tools to do that. And contact is part of that. Hardware, software, hammer, shovels, any sort of tool that goes into it. And we put in a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. We're not going to hide the fact that blood's on that list. It is a very dangerous industry. As Paul said, it's got a terrible record of health and safety compared to other industries. And basically, this leads us to rule number one of the construction paradigm. Elon's trying to help me out here. Stuff, physical stuff, is made physically by humans. And if you've never been on a construction site, you see that wacky, wavy building that I had up there before? Oh, all the tech that we used on that didn't stop a horde of 60-year-old men from Shandong doing this for days and months in a row. 
you don't know what this is, this is tying rebar. And if you don't want, if you want to make an easy living, that's a bad place to be. But this is the reality of struck construction is people doing really difficult jobs. You ruin your hands as part of this, you ruin your back. There are a dime a dozen jobs like this in construction. And when push comes to shove for any of those assets to be made, for all of history, this has been the main way it happens. So that's number one. Rule number one, construction involves physical stuff being made, but eventually all roads pass through something like this. Number two, everything's run. You, make, you start with money and you end with money. You make the assets because eventually, even if you're a politician and you're making a road, there's some financial return. You can boil it down to dollars and cents. Money making water run uphill is really a principle. You see all these projects going on in the Middle East. A lot of us probably know people who have gone there to work. The only way that we're doing these things is with tremendous sums of money. And when it comes to that is rule number two. And I have a little story here for you this on this one. Money goes to contracts. Contracts goes to physical stuff. Physical stuff goes to money. But I'm going to break that down even further, something you won't be able to get out of your mind. Contracts, people in the industry still don't understand this. Contracts are just money for risk. Contract is sharing risk. It's a written document that says, you're on the hook for this. I'll give you this money, but you're on the hook for this. I was recently with a customer. We're in a tech company, right? And he's talking, he's a user. And he's like, listen, Medio, stop. You are from construction. You should know better. He said something I won't repeat here, but he said something that sounded like, my caulk is on the block. For this, for this particular thing, his caulk was on the block. He's a contractor. He uses a lot of caulk. He's doing a lot of skirting boards and stuff like that. He's exposed. But I can't believe we don't have better gender equality when that is the, that's the flagship tech line that I have for rule two here. There's caulk on the block. You'll hear that a lot in construction. Someone's got to do it. Someone's got to take the risk. Someone's got to swing the hammer and someone's got to take the risk. If you are not from construction or any construction, that's as simple as it gets. When it comes to building stuff, it's about those two things, swinging a hammer and risk. Now, I'm very lucky because I get to use this as to bringing it all together. Does anybody know who that gentleman is? Ronnie Coleman, you knew. You're the only one who knew. I can't yeah, believe that. Crazy. I'm shocked by that. Okay, I'm going to play this video, which really brings it all home about construction for me. He proceeds to manhandle that 800-pound uh, squat. Um, but that's Ronnie Coleman. I think he's like an eight-time Mr. Olympia champion. And I really love this statement, not because I like to lift weights. I do like to lift weights. But I, I, I do love this principle in life. Everybody, and I mean everybody, if they had a choice and they could flip a switch or take a pill, would love to be a bodybuilder or look something closer to where that end of the spectrum is. All right, Maybe you don't want to end up looking what he looks like now. Just don't look it up. Um, he's injured. But ain't nobody want to lift no heavy ass weight. And that's what it takes. That's what it takes. Because everybody wants to have the benefits of a new physical asset. Sure, it'd be great if we all owned our own home and we had that flexibility. We had roads, bridges, HS2, those type of things. But ain't nobody want to bend the rebar, hang the drywall. Drywall system, it's a tough job to pour the concrete. If you're in the digital world here, a lot of people talk about, hey, bim, bim, bim. Be, but when it comes to 11 o'clock at night and clicking and clacking on the keyboard and making the model, actually doing that work, ew, there's, there's very few people. I got a laugh back there, someone who's dealing with that tonight. Final one. It's just about dealing with the uncertainty. You break ground on my project, West London Extension Project, and you get surprises. Whose problem is that? It's going to be someone's problem. It's part of building. You never know what you're going to find. Now you know everything there is to know about construction. Congratulations, guys. We did it. So how has digital worked in that paradigm? Well, last time, the great Anthony Buckley Thorpe talked to us about this paradigm where not so well in terms of the VC world. Not exactly the most fintech of words, right? People know fintech, they don't know contact. That was what he talked about. He made a very good point. The mRNA vaccine, your grandma knows about it because it changed the world. What have we done in construction yet that has changed the world that deserves everybody's attention and therefore their monetary votes? And as I see it, in this paradigm, digital software-only tools, 
digital tools, let's say, forget about hammers, shovels, we'll talk about digital tools, have manifested themselves traditionally as software-only tools for what is a very physical industry. And software-only tools in a physical industry have three main limitations that we're going to go through here today. There's more, but I could, we, gotta, we only have a little bit of time. Break new rule number one is software cannot swing a hammer. Rule number one is someone's got to swing a hammer, and your ones and zeros are not going to be on site swinging a hammer. There's a whole South Park episode about this recently. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. I meant to take a picture of myself and my new kitchen doing this, but the second I typed in handyman under a sink, it made my point for me. That's how, how amazing this is, because someone's going to come to me and say, wait a minute, what about robotics? That's going to change the game. I've talked to some really smart people, and basically they've told me we are miles and miles and miles away from even the mechanics of someone maintaining my manifold, uh, you know, the, the little, all the crazy moves you have to do. But that's not even the problem. The problem is, is how do we coordinate that guy with all the other people who are around on the construction site, right? It's a really complicated problem. And as of today, unless you know something I don't, software ain't swinging a hammer for us. That leads to the second problem, garbage in, garbage out prone software tools. I made this when I was a consultant to describe our favorite thing, BIM, in this industry, which we will not, not talk about tonight. But I'm, as, a, as a microcosm of all software in this industry, which tends to allow for people to chuck in information into a model um, about reality, some sort of uh, representation of reality. I'll give me an example. I work on this a lot right now. Reality, I'm as a person in a precast yard, I'm stood there. I sit there and I have a software. Oh, great software. I scan this QR code when reality says I move the precast and it updates the location in the software. Reality is now reflected in the software. That's what the software is supposed to do. But the problem is, is all roads will go through these things called humans. And let's face it, a lot of us are clowns, whether we want to be or not. And I just want to say in defense of clowns, because I know a lot about this paradigm, believe me. I'm not trying to say that that person's a clown in a negative way. Because that person, let's think about that person. It's freezing cold. It's raining. They're the lowest paid person. They're in the most high risk job of the whole place. They're wearing gloves, safety gloves, visors. They have to use their personal phone because God forbid we give them a machine, right? All of these things, there's many reasons why someone technologically may act as a clown and put in bad information, but the, answer, the outcome is the same. We go through reality to this clown town filter and we end up with a very bad version of reality. And images you can see here, okay, it's a fugazi, it's a fugazi, it ain't real. Most of our tools are not actually helping us create stuff or build stuff. They're just there as this fugazi. And most people in the industry are actually not out there swinging a hammer. They're breaking rule number one. That's number two. Finally, number three, this one's great. No skin in the game. Rule number two, you got to put some skin in the game. You have to take on some risk in this industry. It's all about risk. And then you see stuff like this on all of our products. You assume all the risk. The company does not warrant anything will be uninterrupted or error free. This is a very prevalent use of software that's used all over, but you can find it on anything, right? We have these big disclaimers, whereas our customers, they have to take the real risk. So three things, software can't swing a hammer. We're making garbage in, we're, we're portraying reality in ones and zeros, but through the filter of these clowns and no skin in the game products. So why is hardware changing this paradigm as I see it? Now I joined, a, uh, from consultancy, I joined a hardware company and I didn't know anything about hardware. So this was a huge, 15 years of my life went by, I knew nothing about gizmos, gadgets, NBIOT, all these different things. But this is the thing that gets me excited now because these things are out there and they're being used elsewhere in the world uh, that has this concept of physical solutions for physical problems. Just we're not using it yet in construction. And we are seeing new products coming to the market that do that. When you look at something like an Amazon fulfillment factory, did you know that the biggest Amazon fulfillment factory is only half the size of even a moderate precast concrete facility factory? Like these are, these are problems that have been solved elsewhere in 
supply chain management. But we've not brought that technology. We've not sat here and said, you know what, the first thing we need to do if we want to deliver things on time to construction sites, if we want to have good construction sites, we need to solve stupid issues like tracking our stuff, for instance. We've not done that because most of our stuff goes through human input. So how does physical solutions, sensors, little gizmos, gadgets, cameras, whatever you want to call it, how do they solve these three problems? Well, first things first, software can't swing a hammer. I just got done talking about that, like getting under there to the manifold and doing all these uh, acrobatics. Unless you know something I don't know, they're not ready to do that. But hardware can be where the action is happening. It can't, goes where the hammer swings. Great example, Dusty Robotics, right? You're sitting there, you're gonna print out where the hammer, put the nail in the right place, right? But it's not like, oh, I put it in a model somewhere and then you deal with it. It's I'm dealing with it, put it right there, right? So it's where we swing the hammer. But that leads to the next one, garbage in, garbage out, prone tools. Everybody knows who this guy is? Jimmy McNulty. Great, great show, by the way. If you've never seen it, it's a, it's a testament of our time. It's about a cops who basically are just like construction. They're those frontline people in our society who get to go and write it up a crime. Do we write it up? The true dictatorship in America, America, all right? We can lock a guy up on a humble, I can, hey, look, I see you jaywalking. I'm going to jam you up. I'm going to write that up as a felony. Or we can lock, lock them up for real, or we can just say, eh, I didn't see that, right? It's all down to the discretion of the user, how reality is reflected in the courts and XYZ. That's what the whole show's about. In the same way, hardware can provide us with unbiased and consistent input. This is still the thing to me that is the most amazing thing in the product that I have been building for a year and a half is this idea that if I get a signal from this little blue dot of a certain sound, like a certain decibel range, it is without a doubt, it's a fact. It's, it's at least within this space. It's close by. There's nothing about that that is uh, subjective at all. It's an objective measurement of what's going on in reality. And in my experience in construction, we have very few objective measurements of what's actually going on at any one given point of the value chain. And this is a game changer because although it doesn't solve all the problems. It does solve our ability to accurately and unbiased way show reality in the computer, which is a big issue. And finally, this one's super asterisk, super speculative. But I think as I made this presentation, this way of working could actually make us more empathetic. Product person, I want to be better empathy with my customer. And what do we do right now as contact people? We create a meh tool put a disclaimer on it and said, hey, your problem, no risk in the game and your problem when it goes wrong. And we ask for upfront cash, which is like the worst thing to do in construction as a cash trap industry. If we start to make better tools that we can guarantee, hey, listen, if I saw this signal, I'm willing to put some skin in the game because there's no way that happened other than if this happened and I can start to bet on the, I can put skin in the game as well. And I can start to have a performance contract, other things like that. It starts to change this conversation, I think, a bit and allow us to start playing in the same ecosystem as our customers and be seen as a partner in the industry rather than just this overhead. Oh, where are we going to find the money for this? No, they're coming on board too. They're taking on board some risk. They're a key partner, just like anybody else. So again, physical solutions for physical problems. Hardware goes where the hammer swings, and that's a key thing. Products, projects do not move themselves. Someone's got to swing a hammer. Hardware provides this different approach to reality capture, which is really the key thing, is instead of someone clicking and clacking on a keyboard or trying to doing what they're supposed to do, in my experience, they only do what they're supposed to do 80% of the time, we can get it 100% of the time, and we can get it much more frequently. And finally, hardware allows us to start playing the game of our customers a lot better. And that is what we have to talk about today. Thank you very much for being Right, okay. So, oh, I'll be my fancy toy. Uh, right, so, I can kind of already predict where this is going to go because that was excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, quick vote, okay? Hands up. You think the answer is yes? One, two, three, four, five. Five, okay. So, therefore, 14, oh, okay, so only one gone down. I think some people have switched as well. 
That's really interesting. Right, we're going to have a break, and then in about 10 minutes or so, we'll come back, time for discussion time, get ready with your opinions, challenge the people who you're with, make new friends and enemies, no, no, no friends. <laughs> but um, yeah, go and get yourself something to drink, and we'll see you back in 10 minutes. Thank you very much.